Hello everyone, we're back with another TV talk. And instead of covering the typical scientific approach and analyzing the pencil neckology, I figured let's go old school today. Let's talk about a man named Tom Platts. And what better way to introduce this man to the masses than with, uh, as if he's not already known, obviously he's a freaking legend, the Golden Eagle. But let's, uh, if we're gonna show any video, let's show this one. And let's talk about this. Look at that. <laughs> Look at the. All right, here's the deal. <laughs> now, does it look ridiculous? Yes, okay. But this is, <laughs> I mean, the guy's pushing it, okay? Is, is this a stunt? You know what I mean? Is it to deceive people that this is as hard as he really trains? Does he really have, I mean, let me just point something out here. If I had a training partner though, I would absolutely do the same stuff. Maybe not as ballistic as they're doing it. I wouldn't have the guy squat on my lap and you know, he'll gyrate together. But I, I mean, I guess there's no other way probably to do it with this machine. But I tell people all the time, like, brother, if you train with someone, have them, you know, freaking help you. Like, you know, just handle the heavy ass weights and then have, help them have you get the concentric phase completed and then just keep horsing the eccentric and have them lift that up. And you can just get, you can reach total freaking exhaustion not to say that you have to do that every set but i'm saying for the top sets where you want to really cook you can freaking have these people step in and you know muster up the cojones to you know grab an extra 10 freaking reps something that you can't do on your own or at least you don't believe you can do on your own okay uh let me talk about this real fast we as a freaking species our brains want to protect our bodies to the best we can right so if any shred of doubt you have that you can't do something, you're not going to freaking do it. You know what I mean? Your, your brain's going to shut it down. It's going to say, I don't want to do this. And therefore the body does what the brain tells it to do, right? Um, there's going to be times where you can perceive your effort is that you gave it your all, right? But really you have half the freaking tank of fuel left to give, right? But there's... <sighs> It's somehow digging deep and finding ways to grind out this extra amount of freaking intensity, right? And if that's having a training partner, it's like you feel like you can't do anymore, but just having someone's hands like on the bar, they might not even be helping you, but just mentally be like, okay, I'm safe. I can keep pushing and my freaking bro is going to help me get this sucker up, right? You can crank up more reps, right? Just the confidence that someone is there or, the, or even just the belief that someone's helping you. It could be you, right? The biggest time we are our own worst enemies. So finding trips to manipulate the freaking mindset, tricks to manipulate it, that's freaking key. So like, this looks awesome. Let's just watch it, okay? I love just <laughs> the entourage, the posse of people just watching it. It gets funnier as the video goes on. All right, if there was ever a time to utilize the Smith machine, okay, because listen, if you have the choice between the freaking free weight and the Smith machine, you should always go with the free weight. But in this case, Thomas has his bro behind him. And I guarantee, I don't know if they showed him this clip, but I freaking guarantee you, when he can't you know, muster up those last few reps, I guarantee that guy is there helping him push those suckers up. You couldn't do that with the free win. Oh, okay. I was like, what the hell is even happening right now? It's really giant, like pulsing it. So it looks like the guy's got his elbows which is kind of funny. It's like his partner is helping him keep it locked out. I mean, this is the strongest part, but maybe that's just as exhausted as he is. He can't even keep that sucker locked out. But this alone, just to stay in this position with total exhaustion, okay? You can be like, oh, there's not even any range of motion. But even he's just like, you know what I mean? He's moving it. 
I mean, this is essentially an overhead shrug. So think about it. He's doing these behind the neck presses. He's hitting them delts and them traps. He's reaching, freaking total burnout. His bro is holding his elbows in and he's freaking shrugging those suckers. Just getting that absolute peak fatigue on the traps. And of course, the delts are still engaged holding that sucker up. So, I mean, if there's anything about Tom Platts, it's that he certainly knew how to push to failure. And uh, again, you're going to have all sorts of spec nerd analytical pencil necks in the comments. Not, and again, I'm, listen, I'm not saying anything's wrong with science. Science is awesome. I'm talking about the over analytics, the over analyzing, the anal uh, paralysis by analysis. That's what I'm talking about. So you're saying like, oh, he's not even getting the stretch. He's not even getting the full stretch up there. He's got to get stretched. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is like the total opposite end of the spectrum here, right? The, the muscles is shortened. It is as shortened can be, but that's okay, right? Because you you uh, fatigue that sucker, right? In the concentric phase first, and then you can uh, fatigue it in the isometric phase. And you can have if you got your partner, then you can fatigue it in the freaking um, eccentric phase. You can just do all. You can just burn out all those total phases. And again, it's like. What are we talking about today's day and age? There's like the, the, um, the rate of perceived exertion, right? And a lot of people are like, oh, that was definitely a, I didn't have any more reps in the tank, the reps in reserve, you know what I'm saying? But the problem is, unless you, most people haven't really pushed it to this point, okay? Uh, something else too, it's like, if you ever have done like any sort of like one-on-one uh, -on -one freaking combat or something where you're just pushing your body to the point of exhaustion or anything where you push your body to the point of exhaustion that you know true like true freaking failure true fatigue right um you have a lot more in you than you realize so that's why the whole like the reps and reserve and all that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you like really are in tune with your body and i feel like a lot of newbie lifters most certainly aren't like, oh, oh, that's starting. Oh, okay, I'm done. I think I had one more rep in me. That's a good. It's like, brother, you had 78 more reps in you. <laughs> yeah. hey, this, is, this is basically, it's funny. This is like the, this, this ballistic mo motion, right? But the angle here doesn't really change. But essentially, this is just a freaking isometric burnout set. And this guy's just hilarious. I don't even know what he's doing on that end. By the way, this is like the greatest training footage I've ever seen in my life. You know, I don't, not many times do I go online and get fired up watching stuff. But you watch this. This is just like the most classic time. And people say, oh, the Ronnie Coleman training is awesome. And it is awesome. too. I watch that stuff when I was in college all the time. get fired up. Um... But I mean, this is just next level. And again, I hope this isn't just like a, a stunt to that. This is a hard, how hard I actually train all the time. And then like, this is just for the camera because like, yeah, I mean, brother, just to see how hard and freaking gritty one can get with their set. But the gist of the story here really is we all need a brother in our corner. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I might have to start getting on my wife to push me to these levels. And she would be scared. But I think that's what happens when Tom Platts, he's always screaming at his, like, the spotters and stuff. He's like, more, more, kill me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he's probably honestly getting pissed because the guy's, like, not freaking, you know, giving him enough effort, you know, enough force. It's like, fight me. You know what I mean? It's him versus him in this case. <laughs> The forced eccentrics, right? That's exactly what I talk about the bench, right? You freaking control that sucker, have your partner lift it, control that sucker, have your partner lift it. Freak! This is getting me fired up thinking about it. Yeah. This guy's fighting like hell to get that weight out. He <laughs> picked. Look at how old this guy is. It's just very uh, large diameter of his uh, waist. 
He probably was like an epic, legendary power lifter back in the day, though. But he's just fighting like hell right now to help Tom get those weights up. <laughs> Look at that. What is this? Holy buckets. If people think the behind the neck press isn't safe, I don't even know what we call this. This is a behind the neck press like amplified by 10. Look at that leverage. And just look at everyone in the audience. Just, just jaws are on the floor. They can't believe what they're witnessing. That's awesome. Well, that is awesome. God, I need someone to lift with me that does this. Doing lateral raises, they're underneath, and we're both doing lateral raises at the same time. You know this guy's getting a freaking delt pump. He's doing a lateral raise too. We're simultaneously getting freaking engorged. We're in sync. We're one. Look at that. Four delts getting pumped. Oh, and here's the beauty of these leverage machines too like this. Or you get what I'm saying? Like the, the piece of beauty of the machine is like, so this guy's just grabbing one side, but that's fine because it's not a unilateral machine. It just works as one unit. So you, do that, you just get your bro on one side and they're just freaking lifting the one side. God, I mean, this is the stuff that just makes me envious that... You know, I'm such a, uh, I don't know, just, um, I just like, basically what I'm trying to say is I just like to be by myself when I train. Maybe I'll talk with mama here and there, but I don't like chit-chatting for the most part. I certainly don't like socializing, but man, having a freaking, just a do or die brother with you that understands just the epic levels that you can push it. And again, I'm not saying, and I'm sure... I'm sure Tom agrees. I don't know his exact philosophy or ideology or whatever like that. You wouldn't do this every set. I feel like ideally you warm up, you get a couple feeler reps in there, a couple feeler sets. You keep warming up, keep warming up, keep warming up. Get, you know, a set of three, a set of two, whatever, even a set of one or something. And then you tell your brother, you're like, all right, I'm going to go balls to the wall now. Let's bang this sucker out, you know, until we freaking... Our poor, you know, Larry Wheels pours open up, gushing blood. You know what I'm talking about? Like that level of blood pressure just out of the freaking stratosphere. Just all these, like, I mean... So, you know, these spectators, you, know, you think they're going to push it to these levels. I feel like this is like, you just have to have this innate urge to be the best and to just like, you have to be just a sick, sick in the head freak to push it to these levels. These guys are watching like, oh, okay, that's what I got to do. But it's like, you have to learn to really endure the freaking suffering that comes with it. I mean, obviously it's a great pain and by no means is it like this actually, su this is amazing. Like this is... Look at that pleasure. You can see this is pain. Is this pain or is it pleasure? I see that as pleasure. <laughs> He's got three people helping him crank these reps up. This is where they say like a large support system like breeds, you know, absolute freaking success. I mean, if you got three people in there, can you imagine how many reps you can force out? Like the tricks you can do to manipulate the freaking mindset to just crank the intensity to levels you've never seen before. <laughs> This is where the science-based folk will be like, oh, he's not controlling the eccentric, pausing, getting the stretch. Okay. And yeah, I mean, could he get more gains if he did it? Listen, at the end of the day, I really honestly, I'm like a broken record, but I honestly think that it doesn't matter. It's your mindset that you go into your training. Okay. 
This is how he pushes his body to the absolute limits. You know what I'm saying? He freaking just gets those concentric motion and whatever, bounce that explode up. But it's just like, this is what fires him up. This is what gets him enthusiastic. This is how he thrives in the gym, right? If he was doing slow, pause, control, whatever, and then like, okay, my form's starting to break down. I think I'm done. Or I'm going to leave some reps in reserve and all that. I can't. That's just not who he is. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're trying to take a freaking apple and turn it into an orange. Some of us are apples. Some of us are oranges. Some of us are star fruit and kiwis. You know what I'm saying? We all operate on a different mentality. And you have to find like what, what speaks to you. And that's how you're going to thrive. You know what I mean? It's the same thing as like students. Not every student's going to learn the best from reading a textbook. Right? Not every athlete is going to develop the best from getting screamed at in their face. Some need the, you know, the positive reinforcement, just it's different methods, but we all have potential to be just absolute freaks, but it doesn't mean that there's one perfect way to do it too. And that's where the science or again, science is great. The science is not the problem. It's the people that are, are looking into it too deeply and then preaching from a soapbox that this is the way to do it. What is he holding his? He's holding his knees or something. I don't know what the spotter is doing there. <laughs> Listen, it looks ridiculous, right? It looks ridiculous, but I can only imagine the freaking pump, right? You know, I guess it always, it always comes down to it. Like, don't knock it until you try it. And people hate what they don't understand, right? People will look at this and be like, he's not even doing anything. The partner's doing it all. But like, you know, for all we know, he did freaking 10 reps, you know, by himself. He cranked those up. And then freaking, you know, big Jimmy over here came. He's like, you know, and come on, give me, you know, and the guy's freaking hoisting him up. And he's already at, you know, 50. And of course, maybe he's not controlling it much. But he's holding on for dear life, and his freaking muscle fibers are holding on for dear life. And again, people can say, well, even if it's not optimal, you could grow with half the effort. Like, listen, he is developing the most sickening, gritty mindset mentality that anytime he goes to the gym, he is reaching these levels so that when he is he's operating at the levels that most people do, he can laugh, so he can snicker, he can freaking, he can, uh, what is the word? I always got some freaking great verbs, but I can't, I can't scoff. He could just absolutely scoff at the levels that most people are performing at because he's been here, he's done this, he's pushed it to this level. And that's the beauty of that. Is it optimal to get whatever? Doesn't matter. It's a moot, it's a moot question. He tell you he's just getting he's getting fired up with this guy. He's freaking he's like he wants just more intensity. He just wants more stimulation. And he's telling this guy to freaking pump it, give him more, make it faster. And this guy's just like, when is the second to end? When is, you know, he's probably just working in with him. And Tom's been on the set now for six minutes. Probably started with like beautiful form. And it kind of started turning into more of like this. And it kind of started turning more into this. And then it started turning into this. And then it started just being this. And this guy's waiting. He's lost his pump already. He's feeling ice cold. He's getting fired up now. Tom's taking the whole freaking, taking the whole cable stack for the set. Good lord. I've never seen a front raise done that way. One dumbbell, like holding the wrist. I'm sure it feels amazing. His freaking chest is popping out of this incredible long, you know, baby blue long sleeve as the audience gasps and gawks at certainly the cock of the walk in this gym without a doubt. I 
I'm so envious of that. I'm so envious of the assisted concentric and the control, or the assisted concentric and the control and the eccentric, having them push it and the control and having them push it. So jealous. God, I want it. Look at this. This is, a, this is the greatest video I've ever seen. He is standing on a bench, okay? He's essentially, you know, like quarter repping or a quarter squatting his body back up, but his freaking limbs are still attached to the bar. Again, you just know he was hitting those freaking clean, solid reps, and they started turning into the CrossFit kip dips, right? Then he put his feet down, he's forcing up those last suckers. I mean, he's teaching these people a thing or two about the mindset at the end of the day. Oh, you know, I love it so much. Look at that. Just pulse it. Just pulsing it. And you know those people watching have been watching that set for like 12 minutes. And they're just like, this is it. This is the summer. But they don't seem to understand that the magic is not in like the exercises, right? It's not in the freaking optimal leverages and all that. It's in the, the intensity and the balls to the wall attitude to hit that set and hit it as hard as you can. And he's demonstrating to them, you know, how to be just an absolute freak, just a sick, twisted in the head freak in the gym. And they can't comprehend it probably. Because not many people can. Pencil like in the back, just laughing. <laughs> oh. You just know that guy was waiting. They were probably working, hey, can I work in or whatever? And then, you know, Tom's just going ape shit on that set. And then the guy's got to step in, the, you know, he's next. And then Tom, as he's just gasping for air with the biggest, bulbous horse pump he's ever experienced in his quads, you know, watching, you know, Johnny Pencil back there get after it, hit a nice set of eight hypertrophy rep range, right? Leaving a couple reps in reserve. <laughs> the whole machine is like just shaking. This is why they had to overbuild the machines back in like the 80s and the 90s. It was probably because of guys like Tom Platt's, just absolute freaks. You know, all the science wasn't out yet. You know, back when the freaking, you know, the men worked in the coal mines and they understood that hard work pays off. And he's like just hustling so freaking hard in this leg curl. This thing, if this wasn't overbuilt to handle, you know, 10,000 pounds, that thing would just fall over. Like just, ah, oh, I think it's over. That was incredible. Um... Uh, I do want to watch this video, but it's 52 minutes long. And we're already 20. We're already 23 minutes into this video, and that was like such a good, enjoyable watch, anyways. And I think we'll stop it here. But you bet your buns, because I only watched a couple minutes of this, and I said, "Holy, but I gotta watch this with the fellas," because you know Tom was freaking demonstrating, giving a lesson in violence there. But like, this is more of his mindset philosophy. And uh, I would just love to chit chat with you guys about it. But uh, that video was so good. I don't think we can top it. So I'm just going to end it there.